Hey, it's the Chief Body with board games and RPGs, but today we're doing a review of Plains Indian Wars from John Paniski. Now, why in the world would I have, uh, so this is from GMT, why would I have these games from Academy Games out here? Well, the system here um, was first done with Academy Games and I wanted to show them. I love this system. It's a very easy, simple system, but then we'll get these out of the way. Um, these were called the Birth of America series, 1754, 1775, we had 1812, and then the beginning, there's supposed to be three of these, I think, is 878 Vikings Birth of Europe series, and I'm going to lay that one down because I've got something tipping inside. So, but we've pushed these aside and we're now into this. So what is this? Well, it's if you enjoyed this system or heard anything about it, it's very, very similar, but set in the wild, wild west, the plains. You have wagon trains coming across on the Oregon Trail, headed toward Oregon. Some other ones are going to California and they're coming down from the south. You've got railheads being built from St. Louis and Sacramento and hoping to meet in the middle somewhere. And you better have settlers coming out and settling different regions and working on the railroad with the railroad crews. Otherwise you can't build the, the railroad as it moves. And the horse soldiers with the U.S. cavalry are coming in and trying to control regions and protect the rails and protect, and protect the wagon trains. Meanwhile, the Native American tribes north and south are trying to prevent all of this. But there's also Native American tribes that don't like the northern and southern tribes, so they're at war with them. And they're throwing in their lot with the U.S. cavalry and working with them as scouts or attacking forces because they're arch enemies and they have been for thousand years or whatever. So all of this is going on and the card play is quick. You've got three cards. You're going to pick and play what it says and what it does. I will cover that now. Let's go in and show you how that works now. So a couple key things on the board. You can see St. Louis is over here. Sacramento's over here. The Rockies are here, but it says they're here. We've got the Southern Plains tribes in orange, the northern plains tribes in green. The enemies are purple, and these are Native American tribes that are enemies to these two bigger factions. Now, the game's got a couple other um, very interesting aspects. One, you're going to have a bag that's going to have little wooden tokens that match the colors of all the different factions, and that will determine turn order as you draw them out. So on your turn, you will use uh, your hand of cards. You'll have three cards from your faction's deck. Combat will be done using these dice. Let me grab these real quick. The dice are big and chunky. I don't know the millimeter size, but they are huge. They are thankfully rounded edges, but you'll simply roll off based on how many wooden cubes. Let me roll over. So how many wooden cubes in an area where there's a combat will end up deciding how many dice and the type of dice can be rolled. So in this case, let's look at the Southern uh, Native American tribes uh, cards. So first of all, you're going to see there are event cards and war party cards. I have to play at least one of these war party cards on a turn, and then I can play an event if I wish. Now it is possible just by the shuffling of the cards, I could end up with no war parties, in which case I could end up playing uh, two event cards. But let's take a look real quick. So Buffalo Hump. If I played it, I'm going to be able to take three of my cubes from my ready box. I've got to make sure I've got some in there. And I can then uh, move them onto areas that are mine that I control. So where I have cubes, I can place three. I could put all three in the same area or I could spread them out uh, wherever I wish. Next, I would activate three different groups. Uh, so an activation of a group um, would simply be, I'm going to activate this group. If there were enemy troops there, we could have a combat, in which case we'll do a little dice roll off, or it would lead toward the second area here, which is movement. And this card, very nice, because I can move up to three different regions. So 
I might be able to load in some troops here and then head them off to go out and do combat with some Buffalo soldiers that have come into um, some of my territories further to the north and east. So the cards play um, fairly straightforward and fairly uh, simply. There are some different caveats with um, um, mixing into other regions. So I might want to come up and mix some of my Southern Plains Native Americans with the Northern ones, because if I have a coalition, a mixed group, and there's a battle, I'm going to be able to roll more dice. The reason being, you only have two dice of your faction. So I might have six cubes uh, ready to go into a combat, which is great for having reserves, but it's not going to help my fighting ability as much. But if I have six cubes and three of them are the orange cubes, southern tribes, and three of them are the northern tribes, green, now I'm going to be rolling four dice and my capabilities come up a much more dangerous. Think of um, peace between multiple tribes coming together in order to fight off the greater enemy, the U.S. cavalry troops. So I could also play the event card. I do believe there's a little typo here, but I could on uh, Lozen or Lozen, I could add up to two Southern Plain Tribes cubes, the orange cubes, to one Southern Plains Tribe region, and the attacker's treaty symbols cause hits in one battle. So what does that mean? Well, if you look at these dice, and I might throw a uh, picture up of them, I'm only going to have hits that would uh, defeat other factions cubes if I get these spear and tomahawk sides. And there's only two of them on this die. Otherwise, it's going to be blanks or this broken arrow, which is a treaty symbol. There's one of those on there. So by playing this event card, this now turns into a hit in one battle. So I can't use it. There are some cards that'll say this whole round, you can, you know, you're going to have hits. But in this case, it's going to add some extra troops or cubes. And in one of my battles, it'll help me hit uh, 50% of the time. With the Native American tribes, their war party cards. With settlers, let me get a few. You actually have events and then um, migration cards. So these events, it works very much the same where you're going to get cubes. You're going to then uh, be able to activate a certain amount of groups. And then it's going to tell you how many areas those activated groups can move. And then again, you have the event cards and the same thing applies. You have to play a migration card. So same thing when we're looking at the cavalry, but they're going to be called engagements. So I'm going to have events, which again, will have these historic events, but then under these engagements, again, the same rules apply. I'm going to first, um, in this case, take two cubes from my ready box. I'm going to be able to activate two groups, and then I'm going to be able to move one region. So the cards are very straightforward. The dice combats, again, very straightforward. You keep rolling off your attacks, and if you're losing cubes, they're pulling off the board, going over to casualty boxes. And if you get treaty symbols by both combatant sides, um, and you might have a mixture of um, brown cubes, which are settlers with blue cubes, which are the U.S. Uh, horse soldiers. And you're rolling again, multiple dice that are coming in if you've got a mixed faction. So again, you want to blend in your cubes in an area because it's allowing you hopefully to roll more dice. Now the U.S. cavalry troops, uh, have a lot more hits. Um, the settlers, I believe they're only hitting on two areas. No, only one, only one area. And then they have a treaty symbol. So not great fighters, but decent. But the cavalry troops actually, if I remember hit, yeah, they hit on three and then they have one treaty symbol. Now, if both sides are in a combat and treaty symbols, there's at least one treaty symbol rolled by both sides. All combat stop, stops, uh, there's no losses taken after that point in time, and the um, group that has the most cubes left in an area gets to retain it, 
and the other group has to retreat out of that area. So it's very interesting. You're sitting there thinking, okay, I've got a ton of troops and it could end up being a treaty right off the bat. And, oh, you know, plans are foiled. Now the cavalry player will also be able to control the enemies of the northern and southern tribes and they will be moving their cubes and controlling their cubes on their turn and again you can get these blended battles where you'll end up having the purple cubes in and these guys here have a knife and they only have two knives and then they have a treaty symbol now there are some other rules i'm not going into this is an overview you win the game based on victory points but the game ending conditions are if some player, if one of the players runs out of cards, can't draw a full hand to three, boom, we're triggered and the end of the game occurs. Or, um, and I should have pointed this out earlier, there is the Transcontinental Railroad in black. The um, player, the U.S. player will be trying to build from both Sacramento and St. Louis, trying to make them meet. If they meet, that will also trigger the end of the game. There's also some bonus victory points tied up in all of this. You'll also notice there are some white lines running through. These are wagon trails. So these white cubes, when their disc is drawn, will be coming onto the board, and these covered wagons will be marching across the board. Uh, Native American tribes can get points for taking those out, and as more wagon trains come on the board, they push each other down the line. And so you've got victory points coming from these wagon trains, whether they're successful or taken out. The laying of track allows uh, more rapid movement via rail for the settlers and the U.S. cavalry troops. You can only build the train sections when the black disc comes up. And then if there are settlers in a region, a rail crew that is working on laying track, then you can extend your rail lines with cubes. So there's this march of uh, wagons. There's this moving and trying to meet in the middle of the uh, railheads that are marching. There's the native tribes, both north and south, trying to stop this and, and push back settlers. Uh, the U.S. Cavalry wants to come in and control as many regions as they can. The settlers are trying to do the same thing. The tribes are trying to hold their area and maybe even take some of these enemy tribe areas and hold them. Same with the northern. So you've got this um, trying to area control, seize things, but also these movements of wagons, the rail heads moving, the battles that are very quick based on these dice roll-offs and these blended factions along with all the historical flavor and nature of the cards that are being used in the game. But let's come out and I'll give you my final views face to face. All right, so my thoughts. Um, first of all, I love the fact that this system is continuing on with a whole nother publisher. It's that good. I love this system. Now the system is lighter in nature. Uh, the, the, the rolling of the dice, the randomness that comes from that, um, but the concept that you need to blend your forces to maximize what you're doing, um, you know, and, and and kind of bring that, those coalitions together on the board, it's enjoyable to me. I love the uh, nature of the card play, brings in those historical notes, those, uh, those flavorful uh, facts, and then allows you to apply them in very interesting ways of, uh, you know, shifting a rule for one combat or changing how you can do something on a particular turn because of this particular event. I really like that and everything pops. Everything moves through. I also really, really like the blind draw of the um, little chits and you don't know when you're going to go. You might have a hand of cards, you're like, please let me go first. There's even some cards that say, um, you can't do this if the uh, cavalry players already taken their turn. It's like, ah, they did. So this card's out. I was hoping to play this card and, and my, my disc didn't get drawn when I wanted it to be drawn. So you got that little bit of fog of, it's more like a fog of action because you don't know exactly when you're going to be able to pull off what you want to do and then things start evolving and happening. 
I like that. I like that in the system. I like that here. Production values are beautiful. Um, not that they're not good with the other company as well, but again, you're getting what you would expect from GMT. The map is gorgeous. The cards are a little light, but they're bigger. Um, the, I like the artwork. Uh, everything's visually appealing. The boxes with the three that explain how everything works. Um, uh, I, visually, I just really enjoy it. The, the visual fact of the train, of the railheads starting to march toward each other, looking at the board and seeing these white Conestoga wagon tops, it's definitely the feel as they're marching dangerously across the prairie and coming under attack, maybe. Um, there's some interesting rules on how that works where the focus can be on one cube and uh, does it get taken out or not and, and I didn't go into all the minutiae on that but that, that inevitable march of those wagons across the board and seeing them get closer and then there's even a point <laughs> not that it really relates, but it's almost like I think when the P-47s or the Spitfires had to watch the B-17s continue flying and they had to turn around and come back because the cavalry troops can't shepherd these wagon trains all the way across the board. So they're out on their own for a little bit. Their victory points just wandering across the map. So, but the bringing of the history into this package is perfect. Now, full disclosure. I already really like this system and GMT did send me this game. So take that in, but um, my only negative on this at all was the dice are a bit big and I have big hands, but these were big and chunky. Normally I want big and chunky dice. They're rounded edges, which is good. They're the Bakelite material, so everything's top notch on their quality. I just wish they were a millimeter or two smaller. I don't know what their millimeter size is, but they're big. That's it. And that's nitpicky. Because when I first saw them, it was like eye candy. I was like, ooh, I like these. But as I was playing and rolling, I was like, am I denting the table? Am I denting the table? Yes, I could have a dice tower. I'm not sure these would fit in the dice tower, dice tower that I have. <laughs> but that's my only negative. And it's not like I hate them. They're just big. So, John Paniski, thank you for doing all the work on making this game. I love this Birth of America series or feel or mechanism, the blending of the troops, the rolling of the dice, which is quick, the turns are fast, the, it's random fog of action order just popping through, popping through. Uh, there is a little bit of a minutia you have to figure out on how, what's the victory, where can I, what, who can be in the enemy Native American spaces, what's going on there. But uh, there's even an errata sheet, I believe on BGG, that uh, John's been putting out and updating. So uh, there were some things that some folks didn't understand. I played a lot of these, so I personally wasn't having a problem with the rule book, but even I had to go in and refer like, I'm not sure I understand who can be in with these purple cubes and can't. And I would have to go look at that. Uh, but the errata's on, it's one of the beauties of current day technology, you can go look and, and you don't have to wait for an episode of the General Magazine to come out with some errata that you could then cut and paste and put into your manual. Those days are gone. <laughs> Thankfully, those days are gone. Uh, so that's it. Bonding with board games and RPGs. It's the chief. Uh, thank you very much for watching the review. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. See you guys. Bye.